Hey, how's everybody doing? It's time for rational equations. So we've done linear equations, we've done quadratic equations. <sighs> rational equations are, well, I don't know how else to say it, tons of fun. Just gotta keep in mind that what we're gonna work on is making it not rational, and then we can just use all the equation solving techniques that we've learned so far. So let's get right down to it. All right, so what is a rational equation? Any equation that contains a fraction with a variable in the denominator. So here's an example. As long as there is a, um, a variable in a denominator, now it becomes a rational equation. So just to kind of explain what's not irrational, let's say you just have one third x plus two thirds equals x over four. Okay, I see a lot of fractions there, one third, two thirds, but that's not rational because the variables are not in the denominator. Here the x is on top, here the x is on top. Now I know this one right here looks like it's to the side, but to the side is still on top because one third times x is x over three. So keep in mind that we only consider it a rational equation if there's a variable in the denominator like we see in this example right here where there's an actual variable in the denominator. So this is an example of a rational equation, okay? Now, keep in mind you cannot cross multiply until one fraction only on each side. So in this current example, if this plus one was not here, then I could cross multiply. But because that plus one is there, I have to combine the two fractions on the left-hand side. And you may say, wait, 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 there's two fractions on that left-hand side? Yeah, x divided by x minus six is one fraction. There it is. And one is also a fraction because you could turn any number into a fraction by putting it over one. So you gotta combine those two fractions together, then you'll have one fraction on each side, and you can cross multiply if you would like to do that. Um, remember, you have to get a common denominator in order to add or subtract fr uh, fractions, so keep that in, in, you know, in mind. And um, the other key thing is if denominators are equivalent, then the numerators are also equivalent. So there's a simple math rule that says if you have x over r and you have y over r, if the denominators are both the same, whatever the heck they are, it doesn't matter, if they're both the same, then it implies that the numerators are also the same. So one way that you could instantly get rid of fractions is if you'd say, oh, wait a minute, my denominators are the same? Well, then all I gotta worry about is making sure that the numerators are the same. So that's another technique that we're gonna use that might be very helpful. All right, so let's actually solve this equation right here that we already started looking at a moment ago. All right, so the first thing I gotta do is on this left-hand side, I gotta get a common denominator, right? Okay, so, you know, this is a denominator of one, and one of the easiest ways to get a common denominator is just to multiply the two denominators you have. So x minus six times one is, well, guess what, x minus six. So that means that this fraction right here is good to go. I don't have to make any changes to it. So there's my x plus, now I need to multiply both the top and the bottom by x minus six, and I will have that common denominator, right? So top, multiplying top and bottom by x minus six, um, you know, I'm multiplying the top and the bottom, so essentially I'm not changing it, I'm just giving it the common denominator. So on top, one times x is x, one times negative six is negative six, bingo, there we go. The right-hand side is already set, it already has a single denominator, or one single fraction. All right, so now on top, I get two x minus six, the x's combined, and what I'm noticing here is that my denominators are the same. This is awesome. We love it when this happens. This is actually gonna save you some time. It's less math work. But because my denominators are the same, then the numerators have to be the same. So I could, I'm not trying to say ignore the denominators, but now I can really focus on the numerators only. So two X minus six equals eight. Add the six, two X equals 14. Divide by two, X equals a big, beautiful, wonderful seven, done. Nice and simple. Now, the one thing I encourage you to always do is always check your work, right? Why not just check our work real quick? So let's just briefly check our work. If I plug in a seven to the original equation, I get seven over one plus one, which is eight. That's the left-hand side, that's pretty easy. On the right-hand side, I get eight over seven minus six is one, uh, that's eight. So, hey, my left side equals my right side, awesome. The other thing you should also always check for, especially when you're working with rational equations, is you never are allowed to have the denominator turn into zero. 
So that doesn't happen here because when I plug in seven, I get a one here and I get a one here. That's good to go. But let's just say um, I thought maybe six was the answer. Well, if I plug in six, I get a zero in the denominator here and here. That's a huge problem. That means six cannot be an answer. So just make sure that you don't ever give an answer that accidentally turns a denominator into zero because you're in big trouble. All right, here's another one. Um, this time I'm gonna apply the same strategy. Uh, Right-hand side is pretty much good to go. It's one single fraction. The left-hand side is an X over one and an X over X plus three. So I need to get a common denominator there, multiply the two denominators together and I just get X plus three. Obviously times one is X plus three. So I need to multiply this guy by X plus three on top and bottom to generate that common denominator. And then I got to do a little bit of distribution. That's going to be X squared plus three X and then minus the X. This guy, remember, he already had the common denominator, so I don't have to make any adjustments to him. But there's my X squared and there's my three X equals three over X plus three. Well, once again, you know, you could cross multiply here. I'm going to be honest, though, it will create a much harder problem that's going to involve more work. But if I say, well, wait a minute, my denominators are both the same. This is awesome. This is great. Then that means I only have to worry about the numerators also being equivalent. And now I could start solving. But I quickly realized, oh my gosh, this is a quadratic. So now we've got to remember how to solve a quadratic. Let's bring everything to the left-hand side. So I got an X squared. Uh, I should have combined these like terms a long time ago. That's going to be a 2X. I'm going to subtract that 3 over. All right, now how do I solve a quadratic? Well, I hope you watched that video. I can factor. I can use the quadratic formula. I can complete the square. Whatever you want to do. I'm going to go ahead and try to factor this. Let's see if it gets factored. The only way to break up an X is squared is an X times X. How do you break up a three? Well, the only factors of three are one and three, but I need a two in the middle. So let's see here. So let's have the three be positive and the one be negative. That way I get a three X on the outside, a negative one X on the inside, which will make the two X in the middle, and then the negative one times three makes negative three in the end. So therefore X minus one equals zero. So X could equal positive one, or X plus three could equal zero. Therefore, x equals negative 3. So those are my two solutions. But wait a minute. Hold up. Remember, check your work. If I plug negative 3 back into the original equation, that's going to result in a 0 in the denominator. Just look right here. Negative 3 plus 3, 0. Or even right here, negative 3 plus 3 is 0. That's what we call an extraneous solution. It's a solution that you know we got at the end of our work but it clearly is not going to make the equation happy. So we're gonna cross that out and I have a final answer of X equals one. Please make sure you are checking that because if you forget, you're gonna leave an answer that's not fully right and you're gonna lose some points. All right, now this one is a little bit trickier, but let's see if we can figure it out. All right, right-hand side is a single fraction. I don't have to worry about doing anything to that. That's kind of good to go as it is right now. Let's go ahead and get a common denominator on the left side to combine those. So remember, the easiest way to get a common denominator is just to multiply the two you have, which is going to be x times x plus 1. And of course, that's going to be x squared plus x, but I could do that in the next step. All right, so let's see here. This guy needs to multiply by x on top and bottom, so that's going to generate a 4x squared. This guy needs an x plus 1 on the top and bottom. Now, this is where there's a huge common mistake, so please be very careful. A lot of kids just do, oh, 5x plus 5. And there's a negative right here, right? This is a minus. That minus is attached to that 5. So that's going to be negative 5x, negative 5, or negative 5x minus 5. You've got to make sure that that negative or that minus on that 5 gets distributed as well. All right, so... Again, the right-hand side was good to go. So once again, what I now notice is, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. My denominators are the same, x squared plus x. And um, oh, I wrote a 4 here. That should be an x. Sorry. That's an x. Now, what I love, remember we've talked about this. This happened several times. I love when my denominators are the same because when the denominators are the same, then I could just worry about the numerators being equal, which makes life easier. If I would have tried to cross multiply that, I'd end up with a fourth degree polynomial. I don't want to do any of that. All right, so let's solve this. How do you solve a quadratic? You got to get a zero on one side. So I get 4x squared 
minus 5x, subtract the 4, I get a minus 9. Now, if you are good at factoring, it's worth trying, right? I mean, let's, let's try to factor this bad boy and see what happens. Um, not going to lie, if you're bad at factoring, you might want to jump the quadratic formula. You might want to try to complete the square. Uh, but let's see here. Okay, how do I want to break up a 4x squared? Well, this is going to be a little bit of trial and error because um, it could be a 4x or a, a 4x times x or a 2x times 2x. Let's just try 2x times 2x. And guys, you know what? Factoring is really sometimes it's, it's just about trial and error and seeing what works. Then I look at the back number. How do I break apart a 9? Well, that's 3 times 3. Let's try that. So that's going to give me, let's see here, a 2, a 6x on the outside and a 6x on the inside. I'm sorry, that's never going to get me a negative 5x in the middle. So, I don't know, let's try 9 and 1. You know, again, I, I have a lot of options here. And that's what makes this tricky, right? It's because there's, there's, there's a lot of options for 4. 2x times 2x, 4x times 1x. And the same thing with 9. You got 3 times 3, 9 times 1, 1 times 9. You got some options. Let's just try some things out here. So let's try a 1 here and a 9 here. So that's going to be an 18x on the outside, a 2x on the inside. That's not going to get a 5. So at this point, I'm, you know, maybe I'm like, oh, no, what do I do? I'm starting to tear up a little bit, especially if it's a test. I'm panicking. But, you know, don't panic. Factoring, honestly, even for me, your seasoned veteran teacher, a lot of it is sometimes just trial and error. All right, let's try 4x times x. And you know what? The other thing too, guys, is you got to start having a little bit of common sense, right? Like if I put the 9 right here, that's going to generate a 36x on the outside. Pretty sure I don't need a 36x. Like don't even try it if you see that ahead of time. But you know what? Check this out. Let's put the 9 here in the 1 right here. Now I'm thinking on the outsides of 4x, on the insides of 9x. Woo! If I make that 9 negative and that 1 positive, uh-oh, check it out. That's a 4x on the outside, a negative 9x on the inside. There's my negative 5x right there. And I also got my negative 9. So, hey, this is looking really good. All right, so once again, now I'm going to use the zero product property. One of these guys has to be zero. So 4x equals 9, x equals 9 fourths. That's a nice answer. Um, or x plus 1 could equal zero, which means x equals negative 1. Now, let's just be careful real quick, though. Let's see, because that negative 1 scares me. Yep, look, right here. In the original problem, if I plug in negative 1, I'm going to get a 0 in the denominator. You don't ever want a 0 in the denominator. So that's, again, what we call an extraneous solution. Don't like it. Get rid of it. Here is the one and only one answer. All right, so let's now talk about solving quadratic rational equations. Now, these are going to be equations where, you know, maybe the, maybe the two denominators don't match up. And if they don't match up, then, you know, what can you do? So that's what we're going to talk about here is sometimes these are equations where at first they don't look quadratic, but when you're forced to cross multiply, you end up with a quadratic. Just remember, you have the four different methods to solve a quadratic. All right, so let's go ahead and solve this one right here. So I already have one fraction on the left. I already have one fraction on the right. I'm kind of happy. Things are looking nice. But my denominators aren't matching up. So what are you going to do? Cross multiply. It's actually nice and easy. So I have x minus 7 times x plus 6. And then I have a 48 on the other side. So that's x squared. Uh, outside 6x, inside negative 7. So that's going to be negative x minus 42 equals 48. And now I'm going to subtract that 48 over. So I got x squared minus x. And um, be very careful. Numbers are getting a little bit bigger. Negative 42, subtract that 48 over, is negative 90. Now, some kids might look at that and be like, oh, there's no way. I could, there's no, absolutely no way I could factor that. Well, guess what? You can factor this, and we're going to do it right now. But again, don't worry. You could do quadratic equation. You could do completing the square, which wouldn't be that hard for this problem. But this is actually very nice and factorable. So I got x. I got x. How do you break apart 90? There's several ways, but the first thing that comes to my mind is um, 10 times 9. And why do I like 10 and 9? Because if I make it a negative 10 and a positive 9, 
I'm gonna get that negative one in the middle. So on the outside's a nine X, on the inside's a negative 10 X. That's gonna to combine to get that negative X in the middle. And then again, I get that negative 90. So X equals 10 or X equals negative nine. Just double check that if you plug those into the denominators, you're not gonna get a zero and I'm not. So that means they're both workable solutions. All right, let's try one more here. All right, so um, on the right-hand side, it's pretty nice, it's one. I could view that as one over one if I want. Okay, but on the left-hand side, I, I can't cross multiply until I combine these fractions. So hey, let's, let's not sweat this. So how do you combine? Well, just multiply your denominators together. That's the easiest way to get a common denominator. So this fraction has the X plus one, he needs the X plus two. So that's gonna be four X plus eight. This has the X plus two, it needs the X plus one. But, 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 but don't say three X plus one. Please be careful, there's a minus sign. That minus sign is attached to that three. It's the number one mistake, even with the smartest students, so be careful. So that's actually a negative three X minus three. So now I have an X plus five on top. Again, the eight minus three is the five, four X minus three X is the one X over top of, and you could go ahead and factor that out or multiply that out if you want, x squared plus three x plus two. Hope everybody followed me there. And then I could cross multiply. Remember, just treat that one as one over one and cross multiply. I got myself x squared plus three x plus two equals x plus five. Hey, it's a quadratic. Gotta get a zero to solve a quadratic. So I got x squared, subtract the x over, I got a two x. Subtract the five over, I got myself a negative three, and this should be a fairly easy one to factor. Let's see if we could do it. The only way to break apart an x squared is x times x, um, and then I need a three and a one, but I want the three to be positive, the one to be negative. That way they, I get a three x and a negative one, which makes the two x in the middle, and that means x could equal negative three or x could equal positive one. Neither of those numbers makes the denominator zero, not gonna make the denominator zero, so I'm happy. Those are two good answers. Uh, one quick comment, when you factor and you use the zero product property, one of my pet peeves is kids get lazy. Always write that equation, that equals zero. I get so many kids that when they factor, they write X plus three times X minus one, and they just stop, they're done. And they say, oh, X equals negative three and X equals one. Well, I mean, you're not wrong. You got the final answers, but we're solving an equation here, guys. So you've got to always write an equation. So don't forget the equal zero. So even after you factor, you still got to put the equal zero. It's not like it just disappears. You need that zero there for the zero product property to technically work. So don't forget it. You're just being lazy. All right, that's it. Hopefully these videos made sense. Um, you know, if you don't like factoring, I implore you, you know, try the quadratic formula on these. Make sure you're getting the same two answers as I am if you like the quadratic formula. Or if you, like me, are obsessed with completing the square, you just think it's super fun, try it. Try it out, challenge yourself. Do completing the square, make sure you get the same two answers that I am. All right, guys, that's it for Rational Fractions. Hopefully you loved it. I know I did.